Take your Bible this morning and turn to Psalms. The book of Psalms. <coughs> Go to chapter 51. Psalm chapter 51. Got a question for you this morning. Have you ever failed at anything you were doing? Amen. Everybody's failed. Uh, is it possible to bounce back when you fail? No matter how far you fall, is it possible to bounce back? Today, if you're facing a failure, uh, don't despair. There's four things we can do this morning. And it's one, one of them something that I've told you, don't, don't spend your time there, but look back. Look back, but don't dwell on the past. But I do want you to look back this morning because I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And then I want you to look up. And then I want you to look in. And then I want you to look out. That don't mean look out. That means look out into the future. We all know the story of David. Just to be brief, you know, we called him little David when he slew the giant. And then as he grew up, he kind of fell backwards a little bit. Uh, he was proud of who he was. He got tempted just as any man gets tempted. He committed sin, and that sin, being that he was knew who God was, was eaten on his heart when he wrote this 51st chapter of Psalm, this 51st Psalm. He said, have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. So the first thing that he is looking at here is have mercy. Have mercy. I've done wrong. And I know there's forgiveness there if I ask for it. Have mercy on me, O oh God, praying to God according to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies. David knew what God had. He knew the love that God had for all his people. He knew the love that God had that even though he had failed, that God was there for him to pray to and ask for forgiveness and give him mercy. He says, blot out my transgressions. That's my sins. Blot out my sins. I know I've sinned. When we go before God and we pray, we can't leave anything out. If you sin, tell God you've sinned. Tell God to forgive you for that sin. This is what David was doing. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. I want to, It was eating on him. I want to get rid of it, and I'm turning it over to you, God. Look at verse 3. He says, for I acknowledge my transgressions. I'm telling you what I've done wrong. I'm putting them all out there. And my sin is always before me. He said, against you, you only have I sinned. He was saying here, God, I didn't sin against the world. I didn't sin with Bathsheba. I didn't sin with my own family, but God, I sinned against you. I sinned in ways that only you know that I have sinned, and I'm putting that sin before you. He said, because I sinned against you and only you. And done this evil in your sight. He knew God was watching. That you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. So whatever you're going to put on me, Lord, I want you to know that it was my decision and not your decision that I've done these things. And he says, and blameless when you judge. So when you judge me, don't worry about how you judge me. Just judge me. It's, the blame's not on God, is it? It's on us. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. I was born in sin. We are all born in sin. We can talk more about that tonight when we start on the angels and the demons, talking about Adam and Eve. Perfect people up to a certain point. They were perfect. The perfect specimen of a man and a woman. So how beautiful were they? They were the most beautiful things that have ever been invented. Beautiful. 
put it in three syllables. Yep, three syllables, beautiful. Against you, David said, and you only I have sinned. I didn't sin against anybody but you, God, and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. And then he went on to say, I was brought forth in iniquity. I was brought into sin, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me known wisdom. Make me know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be as white as snow. Make me hear the joy and the gladness. Why did, why did he write in here, make me hear the He was in a, a bad state. He didn't have the joy in his heart. He was just like we do when we sin. And when we sin against God, we feel bad. Anybody else out there might not feel bad about you and how you feel, but you feel bad when you sin against God. But we say what he said here, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear the joy. Bring back that joy that I've lost. Because let me tell you, when you're in sin, you've lost the joy that God has given you. And you've lost the gladness that God has given you. And David was saying here, give it back to me. Give me that joy I once had. Give me that gladness I once had. That the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. What was he saying here? He said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. True forgiveness. Not just forgive me and go and do it again. It was, Lord, I've done wrong. Would you please forgive me? Create in me a clean heart. Make my slate clean. Did you know when we pray to God after we've sinned or things that we've done, and we pray to clean your slate, it's clean right then through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's clean. Now, you may sin again later on down the road, but it, when you ask that and blot out all my iniquities, it's clean. Your slate is clean. Don't do it again. <clears throat> Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Renew that spirit that I've lost also, Lord. Do not cast me away from your presence. You know, some people think God does that. They think when you sin, you don't have any more hope, that God just cast you completely away from his presence. Don't want to hear from you. Don't want to be around you. But let me tell you, God forgives you when you pray and he's right there with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. I want you sometime today or this week to start with verse 14 and keep reading through this prayer. This is David's prayer to God. And once he prayed, he said, Lord, if you'll forgive me, take away this transgressions that I have and restore this joy to me. He said, if you do that, I'll teach. That means I'm going to tell other people what you did for me. Did you know when we get saved, uh, if you're not telling people what God did for you, uh, you need to get on your knees and pray and say, Lord, uh, teach me the things I need to go know so that I can go out and teach the transgressors your ways. Teach other people the way you changed me. And sinners then shall be converted. There's several ways to bounce back from failures. We just saw one that David he made several, didn't he? He didn't just make one, he made several. How many of you in here, don't raise your hand, but how many of you in here has only sinned one time in your life? Uh, we don't count them, do we? We do what we sang a while ago. We count our blessings and not our sins. We count the blessings that God has given us through Jesus Christ and his shed blood that we can say, God, forgive me, and it's forgiven right then. We as humans sit there and say, God, forgive me, and we're forgiven, and our neighbor says right there, and I can forgive you, but I can't forget it. Now, if you ever ask God to forgive you of a sin, and then you go down the road a month later and you say, God, 
Uh, you remember that sin I asked you to forgive me for? He said, what sin? What sin? I don't remember what you're talking about because I forgot it. So God forgives and God forgets. Humans forgive, but they don't forget. They need to forget, forget. There's several ways that we can bounce back from these failures. Uh, we don't need to despair. We need to do what I said. We need to look back, to look up, to look in, and to look out. Let's talk about those. Uh, you know, the Bible uh, has several things to say about sin and, and what sin does to us. So what do we do if we sin? The first thing we do, and I told you I won't ever ask you to do this, but look back. Why? Why did I sin? Let's go back to where it started. Uh, let's go back to this pit of failure where I failed. And it's a, a good opportunity to take and, and, and look at my heart and look at my life and see what I can learn from this failure. Because I know I failed because I prayed for forgiveness. But what caused me to do that? Now, you can look back and say, oh, I see the cause. Don't do it again. There's the cause right there. Reassess it. Uh, we either, uh, there was a, a, a baseball coach one time that was coaching a children's baseball team, and he said, we never lose. You might get beat 10 to nothing, but we didn't lose. We didn't lose. We either win or we learn. It's not win or lose, it's win or learn. When we look back on our failures, we can say, what did I learn from this lesson? What did I learn from this season that I was in? The Bible encourages us to think carefully about our lives. So that's what I'm talking about, looking back, because the Bible encourages. Proverbs 4.26 says, give careful thought to the paths of your feet. The Bible says, think about it. Give careful thought to the paths of your feet. This is a, a lesson learned in ancient wisdom and it's in Proverbs, isn't it? Uh, you can get in Proverbs and read a whole lot of wise sayings because the wisest man in the world wrote them. But what did you learn from it? Think about it. Because the Bible tells us to. This is also a lesson that Solomon wrote, the unexamined life the philosophers would, philosophers would say is not worth living. When you're in a place of failure, use that moment as a learning opportunity. You're there, you look back, you saw what you did wrong, make it a learning opportunity. And the next thing you do, and the most important thing that I think is to look up. How do you look up? You look up to God and you pray to him. What do you pray? You repent. You repent. Not every failure is a moral failure. Uh, some are, but uh, don't assume that your predicament is somebody else's fault. I was reading Barbara yesterday, what a narcissist is. It's your fault. You know, because everything was fine until you disagreed with them. And, but don't think every predicament don't assume it's somebody else's fault. Might have been your fault. Maybe it was. I've had times when I wanted to blame something on it and somebody else, but knew the whole time it was my fault. So we have to fess up sometimes and say it was my fault. That's a sign of a mature Christian that you're willing to acknowledge that you're far from perfect. I make mistakes. I told somebody they were going to hear that word in my message this morning, a mistake. James 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. When was the last time you went to a fellow Christian and confessed your sin to that Christian? and said, uh, I want to confess my sin to you and I need you to help me with it. We don't do it, do we? But the Bible says, James said, therefore confess your sins to each other so that you can pray for each other so that you can be healed. If you've done something wrong, 
Don't mess up the apology by turning the apology into an excuse. So we've looked back. We've looked up. Let's look in. When we're looking in, we're looking in to restore something. David, in this Psalm 51, restore my soul. Restore it to the way it was before I sinned. It's easy to shortchange yourself when you need to learn. But it's also very easy to wallow in your failure. We don't need to do that. Everybody's got their own personality. Some people tend to think easier than other people. Some people have to work hard at things. Some people spend years thinking about things that they did wrong. But you know what? It's time to get up. It's time to wash your tears. And it's time to plan for the future. So we want to look in our lives and see what we can do. Start a plan by not what you want to do, but start a plan by God's grace. By God's grace for a future that will be better than your past. Proverbs 16, 3, here's another proverb. It says, commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. Give it to God. Tell him you need to hear from him. You don't need to hear from your next door neighbor. You don't need to hear from other people. You need to hear from God. And this is what Proverbs says, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. He'll show you the direction. <coughs> have, you ever, have you ever set goals? Oh, I used to have a boss man. I couldn't, couldn't stand his itinerary because he, he could show me where he was going to be on Friday afternoon, two months from now, on that date. And I can't even tell you where I'm going to be tomorrow. In fact, I can't even tell you whether I'm going to be here tomorrow or not. No, no, you can't either. That's why I don't like to make plans too far out. God may take me away, and that plan might not get made. Barbara will be left with it, and she won't know what we were talking about. But you need to be flexible with your goals. You need to be very, you need to be able to adjust and go in and, and retweak to, as, as circumstances intervene. I have customers that call me up and say, uh, can you come today? Our repeater's broken. And I'm like, I already got something planned today. Yeah, I can come today. <laughs> so I changed my plans that quickly. Then I pick up the phone and call the person I was supposed to go to and say, I can't come today, but there tomorrow. So make, be flexible. Begin to look ahead to a restored future. How can you restore your future? So we've looked back, we've looked up, we look at, now let's look out. Let's look to our future. Uh, how can we look to it? We can renew our lives. We can renew our heart. Uh, there's some objectives there that we, we have to look at and, and see that there comes a need at times where we can just reach out into the future. Even though we're not guaranteed tomorrow's going to be here, we need to be able to, to reach out into the future. Jesus put it this way. In John 15, 4, he said, If you remain in me, and I also remain in you, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So when we are looking out, we need to be looking to Jesus. We need to be looking to what Jesus has done for us. We need to be looking for the one that can refresh our lives. That can come in is looking ahead, forward to where we are. This is what Jesus told Peter. He told him one of the greatest failures. This is Peter. Jesus hasn't started talking yet, but Peter is one of the greatest failures that became one of the greatest spiritual witnesses that God had. Nobody in this room has failed like Peter failed. Denied God three times. And if you ask the question in the world that we live in today, did God forgive Peter? 
about 60% said there's no way he could forgive somebody that just denied him three times. But one of the greatest failures that became the greatest spiritual success was Peter. Jesus told him, and when you have turned back, this is Luke 22, 32. Jesus was talking about what Peter was going to do. And he has already given his answer to forgiveness. He said, and when you've turned back, in other words, when you deny me and you come back to me, I want you to strengthen your brothers the same way that I strengthen you. I gave you another chance, and I'll keep giving. How many times are you supposed to forgive? Seven, seven times 70. Some people add that up when it says seven. I say 490 times, and then you're done. 491 ain't forgiven you. That is, it was a number that Jesus threw out there that says you keep forgiving. You keep forgiving. So this morning, what I want to tell you, if you're facing failure, this morning I want you to think about David and the failures that he went through several times. And by the way, he's in heaven today. But don't despair when you fail. I want you to look back. I want you to look up. I want you to look in. And I want you to look out into the future. Do all that with Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And you'll be better off than you were yesterday or today. Let us pray. And Father, we're so thankful this morning for your word. We thank you for your kindness and your understanding. And we thank you, Father, that when we fail, that you're right there to be with us. We're like little children, Father, that fall before you. And you're right there to pick us up and dust us off and send us on our way. And Father, we know that any time we want to look back at one of our failures and ask you to forgive it, after we've already been forgiven for it, you don't remember. You don't remember our failure because you forgive and you forget. Help us to learn from that, Father. Father, be with us this morning. If there be anyone in your midst this morning that don't know you as their personal Savior, under my voice this morning that don't know you as their personal Savior, we pray that today that they would look to Jesus for forgiveness because he's already paid the price for all our transgressions. Help us to be better Christians, Father, and serve you more daily. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your hymn books and turn to page 596. 596. If you have a need this morning, this altar is open. As long as I'm pastor here, your altar's always open. You know, I saw it. Uh, it brought something to my mind. I saw a, a, a person one time that when the preacher was still preaching, they got up and went to the altar. They didn't wait for the song. God spoke to them, spoke to their hearts. You need to be at the altar praying. And the preacher was preaching, and the person went to the altar and started praying before they even had the song. If you ever, if you ever get that feeling, come on up here. Come on up here. But we're gonna sing How Long Has It Been? 596. Let's all stand and sing. Mm -hmm. 